Volarei, oh, 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 cantarei, oh, 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 let's fly away up to the clouds, away from the maddening crowds. We could sing in the glow of a star that I know of, while lovers enjoy peace of mind. Let us leave the confusion and all disillusion behind. My inspiration, uh, as far as a musical career uh, is concerned, was my dad. Uh, at a very, very young age, meaning me, I was maybe five years old, my father used to take me to a theater on 11th and Market Street called the Earl Theater. And back then it used to bring in all of the big bands, people like Tex Beneke, Artie Shaw, Benny Goodman, you know, Count Basie, Tex Beneke. And the first band I saw was the Benny Goodman Band. Now I'm five years old, and uh, who's playing drums for Benny Goodman was uh, a guy by the name of Gene Krupa. And I said to my father, I don't know what his name is, Daddy, but I want to be him. I want to be that guy playing drums. And I started playing drums at a very, very early age. And the only reason that I'm really in the business today is because of my dad, because if I had any talent within me whatsoever, my dad was the first one to see it. He would bring me around to different clubs in Philadelphia, asking the club owner, is it okay if my son got up and sang a few songs and did a few impersonations? And as the years, you know, kind of went by and uh, I matured and got older and playing drums with different groups, uh, a guy by the name of Frankie Day, who became my first manager, saw me when I was playing drums uh, in a group called Rocco and the Saints and Frankie Avalon was playing trumpet at that time. We both had no records. We were just we were musicians, you know, working little clubs. And uh, he said he wanted to manage me. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm 15 years old at the time. Please talk to my dad. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, make a long story short, it was a handshake, no contracts, nothing, you know, was signed on paper. Went around to a lot of different record companies. Everybody turned me down because at that particular time, everybody had made it. You know, Paul Lanka, the Everly Brothers, Frankie Avalon, you know, uh, Presley, of course. So I said, well, I, I was really happy playing drums. Let me go back to play drums. Audition for a local record company here in Philadelphia. And that label was called Cameo. And a gentleman by the name of Bernie Lowe was the president of the label. And I auditioned for him. Evidently, he liked what I did. I recorded three songs for Cameo. They did nothing whatsoever. And I thought to myself, well, this is really not for me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not supposed to be a singer. I'm supposed to be a drummer. And then the summer of 1959, they wrote a song called Kissin' Time, which became my very first hit record, went into the top 10 on Billboard and Cashbox. And as far as, you know, musically, you know, I would have to say that everybody that I had the great association to work with, that cameo being Bernie Lowe, Cal Mann, and Dave Apple, were the ones who were responsible, you know, for my recording career. Uh, they were great people to work with. Uh, they were lyrically, you know, absolutely wonderful. Musically, Dave Apple was just tremendous. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I, I really didn't have that much to do with my recording career. It was those three gentlemen, Mo, uh, Man, Lo, and Apple, who uh, did everything for me back then in, you know, late 50s, early 60s. Uh, Anne, Margaret, and I are still in touch uh, to, uh, uh, to this day, and when I uh, screen tested for the motion picture Bye Bye Birdie, I screen tested with Anne uh, for the director, his name George Sidney, who was a marvelous, marvelous man, and uh, when I got picked to do the part, uh, to play the part of Hugo Peabody, and Anne, of course, played my girlfriend, Kim McAfee. And uh, for some reason or another, every day that I would walk back onto the set, Columbia Pictures, uh, my script kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger because I think Mr. George Sidney saw something between Anne and myself. He saw some kind of chemistry between the both of us. And uh, the part of Hugo Peabody on Broadway was absolutely nothing. I mean, he didn't sing, he didn't dance. If he had a line, it was lucky. 
So in the motion picture, I guess as most of um, as most everybody knows, I was involved in everything. I mean, the big dance number, lots of living number, and uh, and I think that was all because of Mr. Sidney, uh, George Sidney, who who saw that magic, you know, between Anne Margaret and myself. Well, uh, out of all of those TV shows, uh, I, I guess the one that uh, brings a lot of memories back to me is working with uh, Mr. Red Skelton. I did uh, something like 12 shows for Mr. Skelton, and that show, of course, was called The Red Skelton Hour. It came on Tuesday nights on CBS out of Television City in Los Angeles. And uh, when I first did his show, I used to do a character. Uh, I mimicked one of his characters, Clem Kididlhopper. And uh, the uh, producer said, I understand you do one of Red's characters. And I said, yes, Clem Kadiddlehopper. Can I hear a little bit about it? You know, and I, and I started doing Clem. And Mr. Skelton overheard me and he started, you know, having, having a conversation with me back and forth. And I was one of the first entertainers to ever mimic one of Red's characters on his TV show. He was Clem Kadiddlehopper. I played his cousin, Zeke Kadiddlehopper. <laughs> And uh, he was just a marvelous man. And he, I think he, he took me under his wing and kind of treated me like his son because he lost his son, Richard, at a very early age, 15 years old, via leukemia. And Mr. Skelton and I got along very, very well. And I could never call him Red. You know, it was always Mr. Skelton, Mr. Skelton, until he started calling me Mr. Rydell, Mr. Dell, then it became Red and Bobby. Uh, that's one of the fondest memories of uh, all of the TV shows that I, you know, that I did back then. But, you know, I was very, very lucky, you know, in my career to be able to work with Mr. Skelton, uh, Jack Benny, George Burns, Danny Thomas, Perry Como, uh, Sullivan. Uh, I consider myself a very lucky guy to be able to uh, have worked with all of those marvelous, marvelous people. I don't know why Rydell High, you know, everybody asks me, how come, you know, I said, I don't know why. It could have been Presley High, Anka High, Everly High, Avalon High, Fabian High, and they picked my name to use in Greece, Rydell High. Frankie, my dear friend, Avalon was in the motion picture. He played Teen Angel, and he did that great, uh, great number in the movie, uh, Beauty School Dropout. But, uh, you know, every, the, the little kids who are probably not aware of me became aware of me because it was Rydell High. And when they hear Bobby Rydell, oh, you were in Greece. I said, no, 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 I wasn't in Greece. Uh, they just used my name as the high school. And uh, yeah, that was, it made me feel good. Yeah, it's marvelous. Absolutely. Volare, oh, cantare, oh, 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 let's fly away up to the clouds, away from the maddening crowds. We could sing in the glow of a star that I know of, while lovers enjoy peace of mind. Let us leave the confusion and all disillusion behind. Just like birds of a feather, rainbow together we'll find. Whoa, 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 and that's the song. And thank you, Mr. Bobby Wright. <laughs> and I thank you ever so much, Jeannie.